on television. We showed you last night Michelle Obama announcing this Service Week initiative. Oh, <laughs> by the way, they're also invi invading your comic pages today. Yeah, hmm. This one's all about volunteer work. Same on television. 60 programs are incorporating some kind of service or volunteer theme into their shows. Now, some will say that's just easier for the media to do what the president asked them to do. You know, whenever there's a request like this, the networks comply because they don't want the hassles with their license being renewed or whatever the other government interference that could come about from non-compliance. But is it? Is that what it's really about? Is this about service or is this now about a never-ending campaign? Buffy Wicks. Remember her. The White House Office of Public Engagement, Deputy Director Buffy Wicks. She was with the NEA. She now says this, quote, Part of my role at the White House is working on service. And so when we were thinking about how to, how do we take a lot of this energy that's out there, how do we translate folks who have just been engaged in electoral politics and engage them in really the process of governing, of being part of this administration in a little bit of a different way because politics is one thing and governing is something totally separate. We really saw service as the platform by which we can do that. To, to do what? To help people? Or No, no, it was to do a... Oh, yeah. To be a part of the administration. She didn't say anything about serving the country. Helping the administration. So, in other words, if I may translate, ask not what this country can do for you. Ask what you can do for this administration. Oh, and by the way, I know how you can help. You can help them by, by helping sign away U.S. sovereignty. Yes, in the next few weeks. Under the new Global Warming Treaty. You know, this is the way to help Barack Obama. Uh, it really, the best way to do it is just watch some of the shows, you know, of Green Week. Green Week is really something special for broadcast television, especially, oh my goodness, especially at GE-owned NBC. <laughs> wow. NBC has their primetime lineup participating in fascinating green storylines when the now annual event comes around. And who could forget the very special green event back in 2007 when NBC did their NFL halftime show by candlelight. As part of NBC Universal's Green is Universal initiative, we have turned out the lights in the studio to kick off a week that will include more than 150 hours of programming designed to raise awareness about environmental issues. Matt is actually live somewhere in the Arctic Circle. Hello, Matt. I mean, think of all the electricity they saved. I'm sure that it made up for the flying their reporters all over the world in jets to some of the most ro remote locations on Earth with cameras and crews to cover the horrifying scenes of global warming in the frigid cold of the Arctic, among other exotic locales. I'm sure the electricity saved using candles in the studio at halftime offset all of that. That's akin to the story that came out yesterday on Arnold Schwarzenegger, who, of course, is all about global warming. I hate that I will fight it. He used to fly his Gulfstream, that's a jet, to get to work. He's just signed an environmental bill, it's an, ex it's an exemption bill, to clear the way for a new NFL football stadium in Los Angeles. So let me get this right. So Arnold Schwarzenegger really, really believes in saving the planet, you know, and the environment, and protecting the earth from the ravages of climate change, unless, I mean, unless I really need to get to work really fast, you know, in a jet. Or if LA is trying to woo a football team, oh, wouldn't that be great? Okay, other than that, I care about the planet. When will America say enough to all of this? No, no, no. On second thought, you better keep that to yourself, especially if it's about global warming, because, you know, they're, they're, they're listening to your kids now. You see, your kids can see the effects of this settled science of global warming. They can see it better than you can. Well, that's probably because they watch movies, Hollywood, you know, the big screen. The air is going to be so cold you could freeze to death in seconds. What should we do? Do not go outside. Ah! Any thinking human being knows this is not about climate change. What is it about? It is about the redistribution of wealth, or what are they calling it now? Environmental justice. But that's okay, because Michael Moore is teaching us now that redistribution of wealth is okay, because capitalism is evil. 
We're here to get the money back for the American people. I understand, sir, but you can't come in here. Can you just take the bag? No. Take it up there? Absolutely not. Fill it up? I got more bags. Uh, Ten billion probably won't fit yeah. in here. Okay, so I'm just looking at the progressive agenda. What do we have so far? It has uh, education, art, the movies, uh, TV, you know. Uh, I mean, it's all there. The same mindset is reflected in the newspapers all across this country. Nearly all of the papers are failing. Why? Because there's nothing in them that you believe. So there's one area where the attacks will end. Right? No. Wrong. Not the newspapers, no. President Obama says he's going to help save the papers, help save journalism. He says, quote, I haven't seen detailed proposals yet, but I'm happy to look at them. <laughs> All right. So we got education, arts, primetime TV, broadcast news, CNN, MSNBC, movies, newspapers, all promoting the progressive agenda. Wow. Well, at least there's still the Internet. And up until maybe Thursday, you'd be right. But this week, the so-called net neutrality issue comes up again in Congress. Here is yet another example of your freedom of speech that is being threatened in the name of protecting you, you know, from the big, bad, evil, money-making corporations. Oh, help! In this case, it's the Internet service providers. You can still exercise your freedom of speech, though, by calling up your favorite talk show. Oh, no, 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 I forgot. You there again need to be protected from big, bad, evil, money-making, non-diverse corporations. The fact that there are plenty of liberal talk stations that nobody listens to makes no difference to them. The fact that you have chosen to listen to a certain radio show and you can choose to stop at any time, that's meaningless. They want you to be able to choose to end the life of an unborn child but choose to listen to the Glenn Beck program? That's destructive. What we're really saying is that the fairness doctrine is not enough. We're in a position where you have to, you have to say who is going to step down so someone else can have power. Mm, those are two, two great speeches. You should hear them all. They're, oh, they're great. So, when I come to you tonight and I talk to you about... Fox, cable TV, you know, this is in trouble. No, 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 that's not about that. You can see the effort to silence Fox News is just the most visible target in the war on free speech. The way to look at it and the way we, the president looks at it and we look at it is it's not a news organization so much as uh, it has a perspective. They're not really a news station. If you watch even, it's not just their commentators, but a lot of their news programming. It's really not news. It's pushing a point of view. It's pushing a point of view. Hmm. And the other networks have a different point of view. <laughs> That's weird. That almost sounds like diversity. I mean, isn't that weird? I'm confused. How could the administration, through the FCC, be pushing for diversity and at the same time trying to, to silence all those with a differing opinion on radio, TV, arts, movies, newspapers? I mean, what does that leave you with? Yes, America, you are safe. Your right to assemble for free speech. Oh, no, now, wait a minute. That, too, is at stake, if I recall. The Tea Parties. I saw, I saw this myself. Um in the late 70s in San Francisco, this kind of, of, of uh, rhetoric was, is, was very frightening and it gave, it created a climate in which we, violence took place. This is about hating a black man in the White House. This is racism straight up. That is nothing but a bunch of tea-banging rednecks. You know, those of you who are watch, watching certain uh, news channels that, you know, on which I'm not very popular, and you see folks waving tea bags around. Don't you see, America? This is a full frontal assault on every avenue of free speech that disagrees with this administration. I was going to unveil what's beneath this blue curtain today, but I changed my mind. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait because I think that it's important for you to understand the scope of this, that they are already indoctrinating you or they already have control of everything and they're going to grab more. What is motivating the White House to launch this unprecedented attack on Fox News? It's to slap us down and get us to shut up. But now that you have this background, what's behind this will carry much, much more weight, especially when you see the scary folks involved. 
Stay with us this week as we uncover the effort to take away your First Amendment rights. America, wake up. Please open your ears and your eyes on this. I know you are awake. Just wake your neighbors. We'll show you the people involved and the underhanded ways they are trying to pull it off. Now, instead of holding Chairman Mao in such high regard, how about, how about we hold in high regard, maybe, I don't know, our founding fathers. Oh, I've got one for you. I'm going to share it.